I believe that Ferguson and Baltimore, those riots, were just the calm before the storm. Right now, I'm seeing indicators and warning signs that this will be the summer of the savage. Why do I believe that this will be the summer of the savage? Because many of these Negroes are already participating in havoc and mayhem as we speak right now. Right now, just a few days ago here in New York, a woman was in an internet cafe. She was taking drugs. Now, I know she was wrong for taking the drugs, but these three savages saw her, you know, in a stupor. They followed her home back to her apartment and raped her. Another incident that these savages participated in was we had this Negro running around slashing people, and he spent, and what he did was he slashed a Swedish tourist here in New York. Another incident with one of these savages is one of these brutes decided he was going to push a transgender woman right off the subway onto the tracks. And I'm hearing more and more incidents, you know, in my even in my own neighborhood here in the South Bronx, um, not that far from where I live, um, several teens decided to go into a foreign-owned store. They decided to just take whatever they wanted. And after they took whatever they wanted, the store owner came out from behind the counter, confronted them, and they literally beat the man down into the ground. The man had to get several stitches, and he wound up in the hospital. So... All of these incidents, you know, pretty much show me that this is going to be the summer of the savage because in a couple of weeks, excuse me, um, in a couple of weeks, school is going to let out. And what's going to happen is we're going to have bands of Negroes just running around, you know, young Negroes running around, um, doing whatever they please because what happens is they're just going to be on the street corners um, outside of their building, standing outside of these foreign-owned stores and these red and white chicken places, um, just sitting there, wait, just standing there all day long, and it's going to be hot. These, these, these children have no locus of control on the inside of them. They have no discipline. They don't know what boundaries are. They don't know what limitations are. They have, they have no home training whatsoever. And this is a recipe for disaster waiting to happen. This, coupled with our demoralized police department um, under this Democratic mayor Bill de Blasio, um, and, you know, this spike in crime, because right now, shootings are up, homicides are up, robberies are up, rapes are up, crime is up, and we have all of these Negro children of the corn just sitting here, again, with no locus of control, no discipline, no self-control, no inability, no ability to navigate themselves through their emotions, no, home, no life skills, no social skills. This is and a demoralized police force. We have a recipe for disaster waiting to happen. This, I believe, this this could be the summer of the savage because I'm seeing precursors to this right now here in New York. I'm seeing all of this. You know, this is just the basic terror that some of these these, these savages participate in you know, pushing people on the train tracks, um, slashing random people, muggings, beatings, um, going into stores and just taking whatever you want. This is what this is what these savages participated in way back 25, 30 years ago when I was a kid back in the 1980s. This was the type of mayhem that they participated in. And people, you know, just like your Democratic mayors back then, your Ed Koch and your David Dinkins, they took, it, uh, they dismissed it as isolated incidents. Not understanding that these children of the corn, these savages, are actually going to be worse than anything you have ever experienced. I mean, you thought the crack generation, you know, back then was bad. This generation may even be worse because, again, there is no locus of control. There is no sense of boundaries. There is no sense of discipline. And moreover, there is no sense of family because a lot of these kids, again, they grew up in homes where there was no sense of family structure. The single mother that they lived with was just like a roommate. It was just like a friend. There was no sense of understanding of, of um, fam familial order. They have no understanding of what authority is. And they have no regard for any sense of authority. This new generation, this children of the corn, you know, this is a savage generation. And they are extremely dangerous because, again, they don't know what these things are. They don't respect authority. They don't, uh, they don't respect boundaries. They don't know what, what, um, what, where there's a line in the sand. And this is what makes them very dangerous and very deadly predators. They just do whatever they want because this is what they're used to. This is the this is the way these children of the corn were raised. This is the way their single mother raised them. This is the way 
your teachers, white female teachers raised, helped them and raised them, they enabled this dysfunction in them from an early age. And they think that, you know, everybody is supposed to pacify them. Everybody is supposed to meet their needs. And if they, they can't get what they want from people giving it to them, they're just going to take it. Because again, a lot of these, these, these children of the corn, they have a sense of entitlement because everyone has given them something and they have never had to go out and, you know, learn how to earn things. They have never learned the life skills or the social skills needed to go out and go get things like a job or to learn how to hustle. These, these, these children of the corn, again, they're complete savages and they don't understand these things. This is why you have children, you know, teenagers and even grown men in their 20s and even in their 30s standing outside of a foreign owned store or a red and white chicken place and asking for change because they have not learned the basic social skills, you know, on how to get a job or even seen this model for them because they, they what they see with their, they don't even see their parents, you know, outside of daycare because they get dropped off at daycare and then later on they have to take care of themselves. So they don't know what it is to go out and do for themselves. They don't understand what these tech these things are. And that's all due to our, these policies created when they were little kids. I mean, when they go into a classroom at five and six years old, whenever they act out, there's always somebody there to pacify them and, you know, give them cookies and give them juices or let them go play on a computer when they act out. They never learn the discipline of, you know, I have to learn how to buckle down and do work. What they learn is that somebody's going to pacify them. And then when they get older, what happens is um, they, the people don't give them what they want, and then they start acting out. And the reason why they act out is because they are used to, whenever somebody... Whenever they act out, somebody coming to meet their needs. But when you get older, that doesn't work anymore. I mean, when you act out as an adult and throw a tantrum, you get treated the way your Eric Garner got treated or the way Michael Brown got treated. But this, this the big problem is so we've got a lot of these children of the corn coming up, and people really don't understand how dangerous this situation is. And I think that this summer may be the one that really sets it off because, you know, I'm looking at this... A steep increase in crime in major areas, not just New York here. Baltimore's had an increase in shootings, and other other parts of the country have had an increase in shootings, an increase in homicides, especially black on black homicides. And you know the response from your civil rights leaders and your Negro pastors is to think that you know job training and job readiness or, or some sort of program, midnight basketball, so whatever you call it, is going to be the solution. And that may have worked 25 years ago, but that's not going to work right now. Because again, these children of the corn, these savages, these children who have never been raised by any parents, they have not been taught any model for life, um, that's not going to work on them because they don't know what these things are. These, these children wouldn't even know, you know, how to get a job. They wouldn't even know how to even, you know, be ready for a job. They wouldn't even know how to come in on time because they're used to the world revolving around them. And when they're used to the world revolving around them, they're not used to dealing with authority. They're not used to dealing with authority figures because they've never seen an authority figure outside of a white female teacher. And even then, she's the one, you know, catering and deferring to them. So they're used to everybody catering and deferring to them. This is why I call them the children of the corn because, you know, they were they grew up like stalks. They grew up like weeds. They they never, you know, were conditioned or trained to understand how the this thing we call life works. And we saw the way they acted, you know, in Baltimore, and we saw the way they acted in Ferguson. Moreover, we saw the way they acted in Baltimore because they took the death of Freddie Gray and manipulated it so that they could go out and have this riot. They didn't really want justice for Freddie Gray. They used that as a tool, as a way to make an excuse to go out and do the looting and the burning and participate in the mayhem and havoc that they did participate in. This is what happens when you destroy the family. We have destroyed the family here in America over the last 50 years. And this is something that, you know, it's like a bitter harvest. I say, we put these seeds in the ground in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. And now here in 2015, these, these seeds are coming up to reap this bitter harvest because without a family structure, you don't have the, ele you don't have the, the, the foundation for a functional society. If people don't have... Um, an understanding of how the family works, you have pretty much set yourself up for anarchy. And this is what I believe is getting ready to come, you know, this summer. This is why I call it the summer of the savage, because, you know, 
again, you have the recipe right here. The conditions are, are perfectly set for this to set off. I mean, again, right like here in New York, we have, you know, kids already participating in mayhem and havoc right now. And the school season isn't over yet. When the school season ends, again, you're going to have, you know, bands of kids just walking around in the streets or standing outside of foreign-owned stores or red and white chicken places. It's hot. Some of these kids are going to be, especially late at night, drunk or high on weed. And they have no control of their emotions. And it just takes something as simple as a look or somebody saying something or just somebody passing them by. And they just get set off. And then, you know, it's going to lead to fights. It's going to lead to, um, you know, basically incidents amongst each other. Uh, people um, assaulting each other. People beating up each other. You know, and this is not going to be pretty. And on top of it, you know, we have a smaller police force than we had back 25 years ago or even 20 years ago. And with them, with them being demoralized and then not as many as before, you know, there's nobody there to be able to deal with this, these situations when they set off. Um, because when you have, again, when you have people who are drunk and you have them, they're high and they're out of control and, and, and just take something as simple as stepping on somebody's sneakers or looking at them. This is not, this is going to lead to a lot of, you know, a steep increase, I believe, in homicides, assaults, violence, you know, the kind of stuff that we're seeing right now. And I think it's going to escalate because, you know, all it takes, because every year, you know, that what happens is usually a police officer shoots one of these kids. And I believe that that could be, you know, the powder keg, the thing that set off the powder keg in many of these savage children of the corn, because... They've already seen that, you know, nothing has really been done about your what they believe was an injustice to your Michael Browns, your Trayvon Martins, and recently Freddie Gray. And I believe that this could even, if it, if it happened here, and even Eric Garner, what's going to happen here in New York, I believe, or one of these other cities, is that we're going to have, you know, a time bomb. It's like a time bomb waiting to happen. And usually every summer, you know, some black person winds up getting shot by a police officer and there's a lot of outrage and there's a lot of you know especially with these children of the corn you know they have no locus of control they have no discipline they have no understanding of how the world works they have no social skills all it takes is just one incident to set them off and i i don't know what's i just look at it and i say you know this is not a good condition to be in and we're just setting it up and just the conditions are all there and people just don't understand how dangerous, you know, this summer could be because again, we've had, you know, four or five, six years of, you know, angry kids and no kids with no direction and no focus. And all it takes is one incident to set them off. And they're also committing, you know, all sorts of crimes and all sorts of, you know, illegal activities. So this is, this could be, you know, the worst summer, I believe, since the late 1980s, early 1990s. If you lived in New York City during the late 1980s and 1990s, you would know what I'm talking about. Just, it was just total lawlessness here in New York City and even across the country. I mean, people were just doing whatever they wanted. I mean, all sorts of, I, I've talked about this in many videos on how I was sitting on a train back in 1988 and the guy was just snorting crack rocks across from me on a $10 bill. And I've seen people, you know, even back then, smoking weed and stuff like that, right on the train. And I see it right now. I see, I see, I mean, two, about a year ago, I saw guys just smoking weed in the street. I mean, this is the type of stuff that, you know, these are the trick, these are the things that when a police officer were to stop somebody for this, this, and it goes wrong, this could turn into a riot. I mean, this is the type of conditions we're, we're, we're in because, you know... I look at this summer and I just see those conditions because, again, we have bands of roaming kids, these millennials, they have never really been raised again. They have never learned, you know, how to work in a family structure. They've never learned, again, what authority is from anybody because everybody lives to cater to them and pacify them. And when, when you have children who are growing up like this and they grow up to adulthood, this is, this is what we're going to have. We're going to have, you know utter lawlessness, complete nightmare, because a lot of these kids, they were, they're used to acting out in class and getting what they want. They're used to acting out, you know, and getting a cookie. But in, again, when we go out into the real world, nobody gives you a cookie. When you act out in the real world, you just get put in handcuffs. And 
that's just the way the world works. And then the whole thing is that no one has prepared these children for the life in the real world. They're not victims, but the problem is that people don't understand this. The culture that was transmitted to them for the last 25, 30 years is one that is completely dysfunctional. And what we're seeing is, you know, teens, young adults, people having complete meltdowns because they have never been taught the discipline, the character, or the resolve on how to function in the real world. A lot of the times you, don't, you learn that you don't get what you want and that you just have to learn how to suck it up. But these children never learned this. This is why I call them the children of the corn. They grew up like stalks. They grew up like weeds. They never learned the things that, you know, make life life. That life isn't fair. You don't get what you want. And that you just can't act out and wreak havoc whenever you can't get what you want. This is what I'm seeing, you know, more and more. That we're seeing with these children of the corn. You know, this is what we saw in Baltimore. This is what we saw in Ferguson. I didn't get what I wanted, so I'm going to act out. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to, you know, destroy other people's property. And then you have opportunists who saw it as, you know, an opportunity to go out and steal and destroy, after they destroyed, to steal and take whatever they wanted. And again, this is something that was raised, ingrained in the mind of these children when they learned, you know, in your public schools and in your home, because your parents would just give you what you wanted, um, the teachers would give you whatever you wanted, but they never learn, you know, sometimes you don't get what you want, and then you have to find other ways to do things. They never learn, you know, reasoning skills, problem-solving skills, critical thinking skills, and... This is, again, why I call them the children of the corn. And this is why I am, you know, fretful and afraid that this is going to be one of the worst summers on record. Because we have, you know, the conditions that are ripe for crime. And then we have, you know, your Democratic mayors here like Bill de Blasio, who are just taking a nonchalant, apathetic approach to this. They don't see, you know, the long-term dangers of this. I mean, you had a Swedish tourist who was slashed on the train, and the response is, you know complete indifference. I mean, this is this impacts your travel and tourism all across, you know, the world. If people start feeling that they're not safe in an area, they're not going to, you know, want to visit that area. And that's going to affect your economy, and that's going to affect your business, and your democratic mayors just don't understand, you know, how a safe city is directly connected to investment. You can't have the rent won't be too blank high if you continue to have, you know, these, these savages out here wreaking havoc and causing mayhem. I mean, people are not going to want to live in a city where they have to be afraid of being pushed on the train, pushed off the, on the train onto the tracks. They're not going to feel like they're not going to want to live in a city where they have to fear being slashed on the train. They're not going to want to live in a city where they have to worry about, you know, bands of kids running around, you know, trying to attack them. I mean, why would a person want to open up a business in a place where they have to worry about things like flash mobs robbing them or just a bunch of kids just and that's the big problem nobody ever sees the issue with these children of the corn from a panoramic view they don't understand how their behaviors right now are going to impact us later on because once you have too many of these incidents happening people are going to stop investing in cities like new york they're going to stop investing and thinking about bringing businesses here and they're going to move on because people don't understand you know how these children of the corn are going to directly impact, you know, the big picture. They don't see it. They're just being nonchalant, indifferent. They think that, you know, things are going to continue going on. These Democratic mayors are really, you know, disconnected and out of touch with reality. They don't understand, you know, how dangerous this situation can be, not only to, that, to these dysfunctional children of the corn, but to their economies overall. Because when you have crimes like this, and you don't take a hard approach to them, you're going to have a pretty much city where there's nothing There's nothing there. It's ruins, just like New York back in the late 1980s. I mean, they were giving away buildings for a dollar because the crime rate was so bad. Nobody wanted to rent here. Nobody wanted to invest here. I mean, even right now, even with the so-called gentrification, parts of New York are still, you know, wrecks because, you know, you have these bands of savages running around. And they, these guys... You know, or here, they're going to just tear up neighborhoods. This is what they do, because they don't have any social skills. They don't have any life skills. They don't know how to navigate any part of the world. And when you're dealing with children of the corn, the, 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 the seeds are pretty much there. And this, this is the bitter harvest that people, you know, have reaped from 40 years of, you know, chasing the dollar, um, chasing um, dysfunctional lifestyles, and participating in dysfunctional lifestyles. Um, 
and this is what we're getting. This is the this was and the sad part was this was supposed to be the perfect generation. This was supposed to be the generation that, you know, was supposed to live in harmony. They were supposed to be part of the rainbow, you know, no racism, no sexism. They were supposed to be the most fair and balanced and most understanding generation of all. And what we have, because people bought into these liberal policies, is we have a bitter harvest. We have a total group of depraved and out of control savages. That is what we have now. This is what your Negro children of the corn are. And this is what, they, and they're just putting, they're just reaping the first part of the bitter harvest. The harvest is going to get more bitter than this. Because, you know, we have the conditions right now that are ready for them to really, you know, bear the fruit that they have, um, pres that, that bear the fruit. This is the, this is what we have right now, because all the conditions are right for the summer of the savage. And it's going to be, you know, I believe one of the worst summers on record, because nobody is taking this seriously. I mean, you hear people recently, they've talked about, like here in New York, they said that because they stopped, stop and frisk, that's led to an increase in crime. I don't believe, I believe that's part of it, but I, I've been seeing, you know, these conditions escalate over time. And this, you know, is just the bitter, this is, this is really based on how this family has declined here in America. And we really don't understand, you know, the impact of family on a country or on a culture. And I've seen, you know, the impact of family. This is, this is directly linked to the complete collapse and decline of this Afro-American family and even the white parts of the family, or the Hispanic parts of the family, because everybody is so busy working for material things and trying to pacify people that nobody's trying to meet the emotional needs of children. Nobody's trying to raise children or nobody's trying to build, you know, a family structure. Everybody's so busy with widgets, gadgets, and trying to impress people or trying to get material things that the family has been lost. And that's what the Baltimore riots and the Ferguson riots, I believe, you know, were a commentary on. They were a condemning statement on how our family has completely collapsed. And, you know, people don't think about that. They don't understand. They just think, um, you know, they can throw money at the problem when it's not really about money. It's about creating a, a social environment where families can thrive and grow and this is one of the this is why this is how you avoid getting children of the corn because you have a place where children can grow with structure and order and authority you don't have people working you know 49 hour work weeks you can't have a 49 hour work week and expect to get a family out of that that's functional you can't have you know children sitting in daycare all day long and they're not getting their emotional needs met by a mother or a father and then you expect to get, you know, successful people out of it. What you're going to get are dysfunctional people when you have no children, which you, know, you don't have children being raised properly. When they're not being raised, you know, by a mother and a father and they're not having time to meet their emotional needs or to, because a lot of people, they underestimate the value of emotional needs. They think that giving a kid stuff, you know, is going to make them better people. No, stuff is why we have children of the corn, because you give them stuff, they expect more stuff, they want bigger stuff, they feel entitled to stuff, and they never learn, you know, the intangibles that are most important to building, you know, a strong family, um, and how to be a person, because when you learn the intangibles of manhood and womanhood from your mother and your father, you know, things like discipline, character, resolve, patience, self-control, self-discipline, when you learn those things, when you see those things modeled for you, they can make a huge difference in your life. These are the things that help us grow to become, you know, successful adults. And I don't mean economically successful, but successful in the way that you have the character to deal with little situations in life. And a lot of people have never learned these things. And over the last two generations, a lot of people have never learned um, things like discipline and self-control. And they've never learned, you know, how to have a locus of control of yourself or how to con have control over your emotions or, you know, because everybody believes that pacifying kids and giving them whatever they want is the best thing to do. It's like, no, they just want to get them out of their way. And now the irony is you wanted to get them out of his way at six. Now you're going to have to deal with them at 21 or 16 or 17 and you can't handle them. And this is the big problem, you know, and this is, again, why I say that, you know, this is going to be a very, very long, hot summer and 
heaven help us if it gets to be 80 or 90 degrees because I've seen, you know, what's going to happen when it becomes 80 or 90 degrees. I saw that a couple weeks ago, um, 13 shootings in one day. That's what we had here in New York, 13 shootings. And in other parts of the country, they've probably had the same amount of shootings and homicides, again, because these children of the corn have never learned the life skills and the social skills on how to deal with, you know, living in this world. This is something that we all had to learn growing up as a kid. I had to learn it. Um, people around me had to learn it. But a lot of these kids over the last 25, 30 years, they never learned this. And they never learned about these intangibles of manhood and womanhood. And you know that you have to live in this world. It's not a fair world. It's not a just world. You just don't get it whatever you want. And whenever you act out, nobody's going to be sit there and pacify you. You're going to learn, you know, that the word no is a part of life. I mean, that's something that, you know, a lot of people have never learned. And I've seen my, my family members who work in education, they've seen this, and I've seen it. People who just don't know what the word no means because their parents are too afraid to say no to them. And that's why, again, why we have these seeds growing up in the ground, out of control, no discipline, no patience, no self-control. The least little thing just sets them off. That's why I say that, you know, you can't put them in job training or job readiness because they don't understand what this is. If somebody doesn't understand what the word no means or you can't do whatever you want, you can't put that person in a job. You can't just say, oh, we'll just give them a job or we'll just put them in a program. This person cannot work in any of these type of elements because they have never learned structure. They have never learned order. They have, And all they know is chaos. And it's going to take, you know, a lot more time to decondition this stuff at a later age than if you had did dealt with this stuff, you know, at two and three years old. If you had started raising this child, learning what the word no means at two and three years old, then you wouldn't have to deal with, you know, the situations like with Michael Brown stealing cigars, because then they would understand, you know, how the world works and how life works. Um, but this is something, you know, people just don't understand in raising children these days, because a lot of people, they were raised in dysfunctional homes, and they believe that dysfunction is functional or, you know, I got through it. It's like, no, it's not getting through it. It's about giving this kid the proper values and, you know, to, to learn how to learn how to deal with life because life is never going to be fair. You're never going to get what you want um, most times. You might get some of the things that you want, but you're not going to get them all. And you have to learn how to learn what no means. You're going to have to learn what rejection means. You're going to have to learn what failure means. And this is just something, you know, your Negro child of the corn never learned. And this is why we see them, you know, acting out the way they act out. Because over all over time, you know, people have pacified this child and never taught them anything and now as adults they believe the world they are entitled to everything in the world and they believe that people are supposed to give them and whenever they act out people are supposed to pacify them and then what happens is when the police officers come you know to deal with them that they, they, they um they um wind up getting locked up and what i'm seeing now is another insane liberal response to this you know when dealing with the children of the coin you have these guys talking about use your words i'm like nobody's going to they're telling police officers to do the same thing that they tell these teachers to do because I have a family member who was in, works in education. She told me, this is what they tell him to do. When the kid is acting out, tell him to use his words, tell him what's wrong. I mean, this is not setting this child up for life in the world. Use your words, tell me what's wrong. Police officer's not going to tell you what's wrong. If you're acting crazy, he's just going to take out the taser and, and, and fire a couple of thousand volts on you. And if you have a weapon in your hand, he's just going to take out the 9 millimeter, and that's going to be the end of you. But this is something, you know... Most people don't get, they don't understand this. And they think that, you know, doing these little, you know, liberal, you know, hoity-toity, um, feel-good things are going to make a difference. I'm like, no, this is not going to make a difference. The whole thing is that this child has been put into an environment where they have not been raised with, again, with the proper values and un the understanding of how to live in this world. They do not know how to navigate through life because we all thought, you know, things like this welfare state we're going to create, you know, families that could just get by. And even back then in the 70s, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, your Democratic senator, told you this was going to happen. He told you this bitter harvest was coming. But back then, y'all called him a racist. You called him a sellout. Not a sellout, but you called him a racist. And you shamed him into silence. But now we see, you know, the bitter harvest from this, from this generation of Negro children of the corn. And I look at this generation of children of the corn, and I fear for the summer of the savage because I I know as a guy who grew up in the 1980s New York during the traffic pandemic how dangerous it was out there. I don't think a lot of you people are ready for that type of mayhem, that type of chaos, or that type of havoc. I don't think many of you have even understood what that was. I lived in that era. I mean, you couldn't go out on the street 
um, just to go take a walk. So most times without looking over your shoulder, you were always afraid of what was going to happen. Um, you couldn't ride a train without, you know, having eyes in the back of your head because you didn't know what type of crazy person you were going to be dealing with. Um, you couldn't even go to school without having to worry about whatever one of these savages was going to do. That was life in the 1980s. And, you know, a shootout could just occur over anything, um, especially during the summer months because it's hot. Again, people are emotional. People are angry. And anything as simple as a step on or somebody stepping on your, on somebody's sneakers could lead to somebody pulling out a gun and shooting somebody. Somebody looking at somebody's so-called girlfriend could lead to somebody pulling out a gun and shooting someone. That was life in the, in the late 1980s to the early 1990s. That's how bad it was. That's how we had 2,000 murders here in New York because a lot of these people had no, again, no local self-control and no discipline. And now, and they were just pretty much, you know, pretty much crazy out there. And if you had to live in that type of New York or in that type of, there are other parts of the country, Los Angeles, I mean, you could just be walking down the street and guy just drives by with a bunch of gun, with a gun to shoot some other guy he has a beef with. Because, again, he has no problem-solving skills, no resolution skills. I just fear that, you know, people have never lived in that type of New York City or in that part of, or that type of United States. And, you know, I, I see all the conditions ripe for that to return here, not only in New York, but in other parts of the world. And this is why I call it, you know, the summer of the savage. And your politicians are looking at this, especially your Democrats, and just they have apathy and indifference. And they don't understand that, you know, people's lives are at risk um, from these children of the corn. And then if they don't take constructive action now to nip it in the bud, this can have long-term effects on their own economy. This is the type of stuff that can collapse economies. I mean, New York's economy was pretty much in ruins due to these children of the corn back then, and I fear that it may lead to another collapse right now because if people don't feel safe, they're not going to want to go out, and then moreover, they're not going to want to go out. More businesses are not going to want to invest in areas where you have these savages just stand, coming out at 8 o'clock in the morning to stand outside of a red and white chicken place or a foreign-owned store or to just stand around and loiter and, or just take whatever they want. They will just go downtown and take whatever they want and then go back up. You're not going to have any type of business investment or people even interested in even trying to visit your areas as tourists. This is what happens when you allow this to get out of hand. And this is what I'm seeing, you know, the democratic response to crime and what's happening right now. Because these, these are not just isolated incidents. This is a trend. And a lot of people underestimate what this is with these Negro children of the corn and even children of the corn of other races because this again it's a na nationwide trend and you know it really needs to be nipped in the bud and nobody's taking it seriously everybody's just you know asleep at the wheel and they don't understand that you know if you, you can remain asleep at the wheel you're gonna have a crash that's all I have to say for this video you can comment rate and subscribe